I love Legend of Zelda games. Ever since I got Nintendo Switch, the Legend of Zelda games have become my favorite thing to play, from Breath of the Wild to even me buying older consoles to play games like Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. The thing I like most about these games were the puzzles. I love the way that they combined story, combat, and puzzles that required critical thinking, or a couple of walkthroughs, to save Hyrule Kingdom. And ever since I started game development, I really wanted to make a game similar to that. So one day, when I found a course showing how to make an action-adventure game with dungeon puzzles, I immediately bought it. And after finishing the course, I wanted to make my own bigger project, more like The Legend of Zelda, with an overarching story, boss fights, and multiple dungeons with lots of different puzzles. The plan is to have three villages, whose residents are trapped inside their homes, afraid of the monsters lurking in the caves on the outskirts of the village. The player goes into the cave, solves the puzzles, defeats the boss, and the village is restored. To get started, I figured that the asset pack I used in the course was actually perfect for the game I was trying to make. So, I stuck with it and began setting up the character animations. Next, it was time for my favorite part, mechanics. In most Zelda games, it's almost guaranteed that Link will have a sword and a bow at some point. These were also my favorite weapons, so I began making the sword and bow attacks for the characters. After I was finished with the player mechanics, it was time to make the enemies. Three villages would need three different enemy types, so after looking through the asset pack, I decided on a classic slime enemy, a fire enemy, and a snake enemy. After some coding narrations, they were soon able to detect the player and attack. Afterwards, I decided that since this was a bigger game than my last one, I should make a save and load system, and maybe even an inventory for fun. But after spending like two days working on this, only to get stuck on making it safe between scenes, and there being no good reason at all for the inventory, I ended up scrapping them both. Now with a refocus on the main concepts, it was time to make the NPCs, non-playing characters that share the story of the world and who the player can interact with. The most important ones were the other ninja. The ninja would tell you about the rumors that the villagers were having issues, then disappear saying they're going to go check up on one of the villages, leaving you there to start the journey. So they required a little more than the basic NPC code. I made an export variable for the first ninja so that once you finish talking to them, they queue free. Any other ninja, though, would stay alive once you finish talking to them. Finally, with all the core mechanics done, it was time to make the villages. This was my first time making a world this big. I had to create the houses, water, a farm, and more. But despite the stress, it was surprisingly fun. And after I finished the first village, I started making the entrance to the first dungeon. After that, I began to build the dungeon mechanics. The dungeons would each level up in difficulty as the game went on, with the first being the simplest and the last one being the hardest. So for the first dungeon, there would only be block puzzles to introduce the player to the dungeons. You simply push a block onto a button, and it unlocks a door. I even made these ice blocks that slide faster, so you have to push it carefully through the dungeon. Then, once the final puzzle is solved, a secret wall unlocks, and you go into the boss fight. After I finished up the puzzles and added the slime enemies, I started trying to make the bosses. To make the bosses, I started by making the slime boss first, creating the player detect, idle, and attack animations, and a jump, kind of. Soon it was almost done, but I also had three more bosses to make, so since I hate repeating stuff, I made an export variable to identify whether this is a slime boss, a fire boss, or a goblin boss. Then I just inherited scenes for the other two, and switched around the animations and updated the code a bit. And now we have three complete bosses! None of them had a death animation though, but that issue would have to wait for polishing time. After that, I began making the next villages. The sand one was especially fun, as I got to add skeletons and lots of desert stuff outside the village. I even added a random house for an NPC later. The abandoned one was also cool, as I basically put a bunch of stuff randomly around the cave, and then cleaned it up a bit to make it look abandoned. Finally, it was time to make the last two dungeons. The desert one would introduce switches, and when activated in the correct pattern, they opened up a locked door. Then I also combined a switch puzzle and a block puzzle to unlock the secret room to the boss fight. The forest dungeon, on the other hand, would combine everything from the last two dungeons and add a new final mechanic, spikes. And after a while, I managed to successfully code it to work. Then I added puzzles and snake enemies, and soon all the dungeons were finished. Now that the main features of the world were done, it was time to bring the world to life. I've recently been reading books on game development, and I've learned a lot about storytelling. Dialogue's function, for example, is to convey exposition, what the audience needs to know in order to enjoy the story. But dialogue is actually the last resort to conveying exposition. It's better to show and not tell. And so while we've already shown that the villagers are stuck in their homes, dialogue can definitely help convey some of the plot more effectively. So I'll have the main ninja at the start of the villages say that they too have found that the villagers are all staying inside because of some threat in the cave allowing the player to understand that they need to find a cave. We can also add some mentor figures, giving advice to the player, saying that while they're not especially afraid of the monsters, they do believe that something should be done. Finally, we can add the villagers. Now their code was a bit more complicated because they only show up once the village is restored. 
So, after some trial and error, I managed to get them to only appear once the final boss in the game is defeated. Then I added dialogue to each one, and finally all the game mechanics were done, making it time for polish. For starters, I wanted to make the combat better, so I made the player flash white when they get hit, and the monsters flash red when they get hit. Next, I add a HUD, that way you can watch your health status and see how many of the scrolls that you've collected. Then, I began making the particle effects. For the monsters, when they die, particles fly out, and same goes for the bosses, just on a bigger scale. Then for the ninja, when they queue free after you finish talking to them at the start of the game, they'll disappear in a cloud of smoke. After that, I began adding the sound effects for scenes and attacks. Then I got to work on the cutscenes. I wanted it so that when you come back to the village, after defeating the dungeon, you're stopped by a cutscene, showing you that the villagers are stored and all the villagers are now out living their lives again. To achieve this, I made a path 2D and a path follower. Then on that path follower, I attached a camera and drew where I wanted it to go. And when it's time, it'll switch from the player's camera to the cutscene one. Soon, it was done, and so was the polishing. Now I just had some cleaning up to do and publish the game. Somehow in this cleanup, I made multiple mistakes. First, I forgot that the boss actually needs to damage the player. Then I need to change the ninja dialogue after you return to the first scene after the final cutscene, which led to me accidentally breaking things and having to spend about an hour trying to fix several different issues. On the way, I also accidentally deleted the scene manager and realized the collision tape on several of the enemies were still on for a couple seconds after dying. And after like spending a whole day trying to fix a bunch of small issues, soon I was finally done. I couldn't find a good background for this game, so I got my Jarvis ChatGPT to make me one instead. Then I made it the first scene, added some code, and finally the game was done. And I uploaded to itch.io and finally got to relax. This was the biggest game I ever made, but it was certainly the most fun. I learned a lot from this game, from dialogue to boss fights and puzzle mechanics. And while there were a lot of challenges, I'm glad I got to expand my knowledge on Godot. Since then, I've also been learning pixel art, and maybe soon I'll start learning C Sharp for Unity. Let me know what you think I should make next in the comments. And if you'd like to play the game I made, my Ish.io page is in the description. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time!